Yeah. But it's like your winter skin yes, shows every it shows level. Your winter <laughs> skin. This is a I've good start. Skin. <laughs> your winter skin. Oh no, my gosh. That's true. I've never heard winter skin. Your winter skin is different than your summer skin. I could really I'm, really I'm color. Okay, talking about confidence. I'm a whole different person in my summer skin. Me too. I feel way more confident. I'm way more confident in my summer skin too, for sure. Winter yeah. skin is different because it's dry. Yeah, and like see through. Like mom just said the other day, she's like, I literally look like a fish. Okay, so ironically, we were just talking about um, feeling a lot more confident in the summer than we do in the winter when Bella noticed that all of our legs are just looking pasty. But anywho, um, it's kind of funny that we were just saying that because this whole conversation is going to be on body image. And let me just go ahead and preface this whole talk by um, just where we're coming from with this. So the other night, we were at dinner for our friend's birthday and our friend Freddie, who y'all know if you listen to this podcast. She was just about to have her baby, which at this point she's had the baby, but at dinner she was literally going in what well, we didn't know, but like two days later. And she was just kind of talking about asking us about postpartum and body image and talking about her struggles with, um, you know, just her body changing so much. And we just had like the best conversation. And during that conversation, uh, I said not to be this person, but we should do a podcast about this just because I was like, if I, you know, was in this season a couple of years ago and didn't have friends like this to talk through some of these things, um, man, I would just so love to listen into that conversation and just know that I'm not alone. And I'm so thankful to have the friends that I have and um, so thankful to have the conversations we've had. And even, you know, y'all know Lainey, we've had these conversations. I've had people in my life to talk about this with, but if you haven't had a friend who's like, hey, here's the real struggle of it, but also here's the truth in it too, then hopefully we can be those friends for you today. Um, one thing that we already did say too is, Whenever you came on here and you saw body image, you probably thought, oh, I know where they're going to go. Because if you've heard me on this podcast, you've heard me preach, I'm always preaching truth to the fact that we should be confident in who we were originally created to be. And while that is so true, and there are so many scriptures to back up the truth of that, um, I talk about being, you know, formed in your mother's womb and knit together and beautiful and wonderful and all that is true. So hear me say that that's true. Sometimes we have a hard time believing that, that that's true. And and so today we're not going to come here and tell you all the things that you should believe is true because that is true and you should, you know, believe that. But what we're going to do is we're just going to share the reality of what some of our struggles are when it comes to body image. And so this isn't going to be a podcast as much of like, hey, here's truth bomb after truth bomb of like why you should be confident. It's more like sisters saying, hey, we're in it with you. We've experienced too. We get it. We are still in it. We are all the things. But one thing we did say at our dinner was like, man, this is so cool because we all used to struggle a lot with our body image and we're all at a place now where we really are confident in who we are. That doesn't mean that some days we don't struggle. That doesn't mean that we don't go through, you know, that ebb and flow of struggling with our body or even sometimes, you know, we get insecure about a little thing. Like right before we started this, I saw myself on the big screen and go, oh, my postpartum hairs. So there's still the things that we're going to, you know, kind of struggle with, but we're all anchored in that truth that I said we know. Um, so we're just going to share. Um, I'm going to start. We're all going to take some time to talk. So before y'all start commenting about letting my friends talk, I'm going to let my friends talk. We are all going to get a chance to share um, just our story with it. But I'm going to start at how we started the conversation the other day because Freddie was like talking about pregnancy and your body changing. And she's like, what, what is it like for y'all and postpartum and just kind of what to expect. And I think her question was, when did you feel like yourself again? And I remember telling her that it was such a journey, like right after having the baby, I went through so many different experiences of like highs and lows with my body image. Um, and I'll first say like, I am so against the bounce back culture. I just do not like that, that people are all like, how fast did you bounce back? Or people sharing on Instagram, like, you know, their full body right after they had the baby, um, whenever it's like super ripped and look at what I did. Cause I'm just like, man, I just think that that time of your life, especially right after you have your baby is not 
to be focusing on what you look like and how you can bounce your body back. It, it's really for you to bond with your baby and your body is supplying your baby's needs. It, there's so much that goes into that and it's so much bigger than just the way your body looks. So not very for the bounce back culture, but what I experienced was as soon as I had both babies, I felt so confident like day of the hospital, you know, you lose like oh so much weight all of a sudden and it just feels amazing because, you know, honey was nine five. So there's nine pounds out and then all the fluid and all the things. And I remember looking in the mirror and being like, I bounced back. <laughs> now, granted, I looked probably five months pregnant, but in my mind, I did not. I was like, I am crushing it. I'll never forget. It was like rose colored glasses. I was like delusional because I thought I looked so great. I opened the door and I said, Christian, look at me. This is amazing. I'm like wearing a diaper. <laughs> I just think I'm like crushing it. He's like, wow, babe, you look amazing. That was so kind. Um, but I just really, I was like, I felt so confident. And I think that was because it was so much more than what I looked like. I just birthed a child. I was like, my body is awesome. How did it do that? This is nuts. This is crazy. Like, I was just amazed by the process. And then on the car ride back from the hospital with Honey, I talked about it the whole time. I was like, oh my gosh, my body is just like, this is crazy. I just like kept talking about it. And I remember telling him, I never want to forget the way I feel right now. I never want to forget how confident I am in my skin. And it's cool that I actually still remember that because, you know, right after you have a baby, I was on pain medicine. I was like, I thought even at the time I thought this might be because of the medicine like this is my I might be a little delusional but I really think that was me in my right mind like that was me in my right headspace to be confident in so much more than just an image well then of course you know time goes on and I remember like two weeks went by and I'm thinking oh yeah time to go put my rings back on <laughs> no my ring went to like right here not even my knuckle and it was like denied so I was like okay there's that and then I remember like three weeks, I was like, oh, I'm going to put my jeans on. Nope. Denied. Access denied for rings and jeans. And I was like, OK, all right. And then I'm starting to feel like, well, should I be, you know, back to, you know, my jeans or my rings or whatever and whatever. Don't even think about that right now. And then it's like three months go by and then you're like, OK, when is it going to start changing? And then you're starting to notice that your body is not the same as before and all the different things. And I remember, you know, you can start to feel a little bit insecure in that space whenever you feel like it should be different than it is or you're starting to come to the reality that your body is different than it was. And it's not necessarily going to go back like I don't even know. I guess if you bounce back, it might go bad, but it's still different. It's not going to be the same. Um, and I remember having like all of these more than just the image and what I looked like. I just had so many different problems than I had before, like hormonal things um, like hair loss. That was crazy. And I had um, I broke out and all these bumps, they were like red bumps all over my legs and all over my arms. Then I thought I had celiac disease. I had to go through like a scope. And then when I got the scope, it they didn't clean the thing right. And I had like a fire infection down my throat for weeks. My tongue was like completely broken out. And I just felt like, okay, what is happening to my body? Like, this is not my body. And just really uncomfortable in my skin. And I went to the doctor and she said, you know, I really think that you're just going to have to give it a full nine months. She said, it took you nine months to grow the baby going to take you nine months to kind of get back to feeling like yourself again. And I was like, man, that feels like a long time, you know, but it was true. Actually, whenever I got to nine months um, postpartum, everything did just kind of fall back and not again, not back to the old normal, but to a new normal. And I really felt like myself, but I felt like myself in my new skin. And I felt so much more confident than even myself and my old skin. And we were talking about this the other day at dinner because I said, I think used to, um, and a lot of you guys know my past struggles with like eating and body dysmorphia and all those different things. I had this like standard of perfection in my mind for what I wanted my body to look like. And I pushed myself to get there. But after I had a baby, um, you know, there's stretch marks where there used to not be stretch marks and things just look a little different and things change. And all of a sudden, like the image of perfection that I had was like gone. So I wasn't holding myself to a standard. My new standard was like healthy. My new standard was being confident in my skin, being the best I can for honey. 
Y'all, when you have a two and a half year old and a nine month old, sleep is a struggle, not gonna lie. Sleep can be a struggle for parents of any young kids, but thankfully Dreamland Baby has got your back and it has had ours for the past two and a half years. You might have seen Dreamland Baby make a deal on Shark Tank featured in Forbes or in top retailers like Nordstrom's. One of their products that I love personally is their Dreamland Baby Weighted Sleep Sack. This is seriously amazing. We have used it since Honey was a baby. Now Haven uses it and Honey is on to the weighted blanket. Deeper sleep for your baby also means deeper sleep for you as a mom and a dad too, and it is a game changer for the entire house. Plus, it's made from high quality materials that will stay just as soft and durable as ever, even after washing them. So we've used the uh, sleep sack since Honey was little, and now Haven uses it. And Honey actually has her own weighted blanket from Dreamland, and she loves it. She thinks it's so cool and so comfy. So go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter my code WHOA, W-H-O-A, at checkout to receive 20% off site-wide and free shipping. This offer is for new and existing customers. That's dreamlandbabyco.com and enter the code WHOA, W-H-O-A, to receive 20% off site-wide plus free shipping. I remember when I started working out, she said, what's your goals? And I said, to effortlessly put the Duna in the car when honey gains weight. Because she was a big baby and I had to lift that Duna and put it in the car over and over and over again. And like my goal was I wanted to be able to like confidently put her in the car seat without needing Christian to help me whenever, even whenever she's like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so my goals just shifted. The way I looked at my body just shifted. The expectation I put on my body shifted. And I was so much more confident. And I truly now even I've had a C-section. So now I have a big scar. My body definitely changed from that. And the stretch marks from both kids and the postpartum hairs and everything's just different. But I love my body so much more now than I used to. And I look back at pictures and I'm like, why did I think, like, why was I insecure in that season? Why did I think that? You know, you look back and you have hindsight 2020, you have such better vision. But even now I'm just like, man, I just love it so much more because I appreciate it for what it's done so much more. I appreciate it for what it's done for my kids. I appreciate what it's done for myself. Um, I'm just like, man, it's just so much bigger than what I always thought that it was. And I don't want to go back to that headspace. Now, that doesn't mean that there still aren't days that I struggle. I still have all the scars from the bumps that I had. And, you know, I try all the different lotions to, to help fix that and all the things. But I'm like confident enough to know, to not be insecure about it. And I'll finish my little story with this because I thought this was really, really cool. Last night I went to um like women of faith thing locally. It was um it was called Champions of Faith, I think. Yeah. And it was like women who have been through really hard things telling their story. And there is this woman and she had COVID. And she, when she had COVID, she was one of the first patients in our area with COVID. And she was in the hospital for over 240 days with COVID. Yes. She almost died several times. Like the, the, her family told her bye, all this stuff. Well, she was telling her story and like she carried a lot of bitterness and hate in her heart from something that had happened in the past um, with her ex-husband. And basically like in the hospital, she kept feeling that like the Lord said to forgive him. And she was just like, are you kidding me? Like it had been like 20 years. And she's like, she didn't really realize that that was what was making her such a miserable person. And so she was just like, I can't forgive him, but she just kept feeling it. So one day she called her ex-husband and he didn't answer. And she just left a voice memo. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like I forgave you for everything that you did and all this stuff. And I'm like letting it go. I'm releasing it. He never called back. He never got back to her, but she said literally in that moment, it freed her of the hate and the bitterness in her heart. And she said, like, I know that sounds unbelievable. It was unbelievable to me, but it was in that moment. I did not hate him anymore. I, I did not have bitterness. I, I let that go. Well, she ends up saying that in the days to come as she was in the hospital, she didn't realize that as she stopped thinking about herself so much, she was able to see the people around her and she started praying for the other nurses and she started talking to the other nurses. And then like, eventually she said, yes, God physically healed me. But the most important thing was that he spiritually healed me. And she was like, when I stopped focusing on myself, I realized the blessing I could be to other people. And I think in the same way, when I thought about that last night and knowing we were having this conversation today, it's the same way with body image. 
when you're able to stop thinking about yourself so much, you are able to see the people around you. And I think about what I thought about back in the day when I struggled with body image. And most of my thoughts were consumed with me and what people thought about me when no one cared. Like no one cared what my body looked like. No one cared how my body was changing. No one was thinking about the few extra pounds or the few smaller pounds, but it was consuming my mind and I wasn't able to see the people around me. And so now I'm like, man, my thoughts are just free of that. Like, I'm not thinking about that. I'm not dwelling on that. It's not like what I'm thinking about when I walk into a room. I'm able to see people. I'm able to, you know, see my husband, see my kids, see my friends for where they're at. And so I think like the importance of getting free of this is like when you're miserable, sometimes, you know, it bleeds into the way that you act with other people. So it's just so important that you free your mind so that you can be the friend that you are, the mom that you are to other people's uh, in their life. And that's what I've been able to experience through gaining more confidence. Um, so again, struggle, but on the other side of it. So there's me. <laughs> Where y'all at? Um, I guess I can start. I don't really have like a way the story all goes but I guess my story is kind of like around the time of my wedding I got like super in shape and I think that at the time looking back it wasn't that I you know was so self-conscious during that time it was almost that I was like confident in my body to the point where I got confused in my mind that like my body was who I was you know and it was like, I put myself and my fitness and my body on a pedestal to the point where it was like, that was all I cared about, you know? And like, that was who I was. And like, if I gained weight or anything, then I wasn't myself anymore. Yeah. And I think that I've gotten to points in my life where it's like, I think in my head, like, that's my normal. And like, if I'm gain a little bit of weight, then like, I'm not my normal self. Like, this isn't me. That's me. And I'm going to get back to that one day because that is me, you know? And I feel like that's where I've struggled is just like feeling like my, what I look like is who I am and not like focusing on who I actually am on the inside, which is kind of what I talked to you all about the other night. It was actually funny. I was on a bachelorette trip and we were watching Mama Mia and we were watching Mama Mia and it's Mama Mia 2, which have y'all seen Mama Mia 2? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in Mama Mia 2... Meryl Streep is not in it anymore and she's the mom, but her younger self is played by Lily James and it's a different person, of course, so it doesn't, you know, actually work. But like in the movie, it's flipping between her young self and her old self. And I was thinking the whole time I was like, this is so crazy how fast life goes. Like I was just thinking about the fact that like right now what I look like when I look in the mirror, I think like that's me. And then in 30 years, I'm going to look at pictures and be like, who is that? Like, yeah. this is me. And then I'm going to look in the mirror and be like, this is me. But like, really and truly, what we look like is not who we are. Yeah. You know? And I feel like that's kind of the place I've been at lately is just like, wow, like what I look like is so changing and fleeting and is different every day. Mm -hmm. And so I can't rely or put my confidence yeah. in something that changes so fast and like yeah. it made me think too about like like Jacob he his hair is always different he has a different <laughs> hairstyle a different haircut he has long hair he has short hair he has all this but he always says like well I'm gonna get my hair like my normal haircut I'm like what's your normal haircut <laughs> you have a different haircut all the time he's like no but you know like my normal haircut I'm like I really don't know what your normal <laughs> haircut is you always have a different haircut and he's like you know like whatever a fade with like a little bit longer on the top and I'm like but that's not like your normal haircut because you never have that. He's like, but I used to have that. That's how I used to always have my hair. And it's like, I think sometimes I'm like, that's my normal and that's what I should be back to because that's who I am. And like, that's my normal. But really, like, there's not a normal, you know, yeah. it's just like, yeah, we change all the time. And so right now, what's normal for me right now is my normal. And if, you know, if I get back to where I used to be, okay, fine. But that's yeah. not neither one is who I'm supposed to be or yeah. should be, you know? Yeah. So I guess great. that's kind of, that's so good. Really I don't know. Good. That's, that's so what, true. Answering the question. But. Oh, that answers the question perfectly. And again, it's like sharing where you're at. And I think that like, 
this has been a struggle for me in the past. I think this has probably been a struggle for all of us. It's like, um, I feel like used to what it was rooted in a lot was I felt like I had to do something to become like, okay, if I'm going to be this and I need to do X, Y, and Z to get there, it's like, I have to do something to achieve that. So it's like, oh, I got to get back to my normal or I got to do this amount of workout or this program or this thing or this trend or that. And then I'll feel confident. But that's such a scheme of the enemy. and such a lie. And that's just outside of body image and everything. If you think you have to like get something else to be happy besides Jesus, you're going to be searching for a long time. And so if you don't just find it right where you're at in the season you're at and speaking of life changing, you really realize that when you have kids because like honey when I get a flashback from a year ago I'm like she was a baby and now she's like fully talking and it's just crazy but I'm like man I'm so glad like I would never look at one season of her life to the other and say like one was better like it's all so sweet so yes you don't want to believe this lie that in another season or in another thing or with another product that you could be more confident than where you can be now by just rooting yourself and anchoring yourself in gratitude and truth and contentment. I don't know if you're anything like me and your social media algorithm looks like all the products that are bad for your kids to eat, but mine is like that. And I'm like so worried about what to feed them because it seems like every product is just bad. Safe quality products are super important and especially when it comes to my girls and that is why I am loving A2 Platinum Infant Formula. It's made from fresh, pure A2 milk from cows that naturally produce only the A2 protein. A2 Platinum is perfect for tiny tummies because it is nutritionally complete with key ingredients ingredients that support growing babies. A2's commitment to quality and safety is unmatched, y'all. They have a flawless record of zero recalls, which is honestly super impressive, and I am not the only one who thinks so. A2 has been trusted by parents around the world for more than a decade. Haven loves this formula. Actually, I thought she was going to like the one that we had she had gotten used to, so when I switched it, I was like, eh, I'm not sure what she's going to think. First of all, she sucked it down, and now she definitely prefers it over anything else. A2 Platinum is definitely the smart choice, and it's the one she actually likes. And right now, as one of my listeners, you'll get 25% off your first purchase when you order using my exclusive URL, a2platinum.com slash whoa. This is an amazing deal for all you moms out there buying formula. You know we could use any percentage off, so don't wait. Order now with the letter A, the number two, platinum.com slash whoa, W-H-O-A. That's a2platinum.com slash whoa. Yeah, and I think too, it's just like, during that time where I was like fitness was my everything I was like in my head I was thinking like health is my you know everything you know and like I was thinking like I'm not anything if I'm not a healthy person you know and I think now I'm just learning the complexity of health and like at the time I was so healthy physically but like emotionally and mentally I was all over the place yeah and I think that now, you know, I may not be as like physically healthy, but I'm so much more mentally stable and emotionally healthy and everything. And so I feel like there's just such different definitions of health. And at the time I was confusing health and fitness. And I think like mm-hmm. now I'm looking back and I'm like, I like idolized fitness at the mm-hmm. time, you know, and like fitness was like everything to me. And I named it as health to like right. feel better about myself yeah. that like oh well I'm healthy like that's what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be healthy like we have to be healthy that's like you know why you know that's how we live you know if we're healthy and I think that at the time I was just like trying to make it feel better to me by saying it was it was yeah. it was health but really it was it was like an idolization of fitness yes. yeah. I just preached a message on this about You have to be careful when you're good at making things sound spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I think like we all know the good thing and the right thing. And and without even meaning to, with a good intention, you can be like, oh, no, this is good. It's healthy, you know. But it really does take like that listening to your own conviction to go, okay, I'm just making this sound better than it is. My mind is not healthy, so it's not healthy. Yep. All right, girls, who's next? I feel like I relate to a lot of what Bella's saying, and and we have talked about that. Um, I don't know if I'm I'm probably going to be all over the place right now because I'm kind of like you. I feel like there's like my whole life has been, you know, leading up to this this time where I'm at now where I really have found so much freedom. But, I mean, 
I started struggling with body image when I was way too young to even be recognizing that like that was a thing, you know, and I feel like that's a lot of our story. Um, but I remember in middle school, I mean, I would, I would like at lunch, I would just, <laughs> I would just eat like the meat off of my sandwich and like nothing else. And I'd be like, well, that's all I'm going to eat for today. And then I'd go home and like, I wouldn't want to like overeat in front of people. And so then I would just, you know, I'd eat a little bit and then you know, move on. And then my problem was I would always like eat in hiding. And so then I would like in front of everyone, I wanted to put on like a good, like a good face, I guess, and like not overeat. But then in hiding, I would be like, okay, I'm going to go get the candy bar out of the pantry and I'm going to take it back to my room and I'm going to like, and no one knows. And then, and then I would hate myself after that, you know, like then I'm like, dang it. Like I did so good all day. And then now like, I just messed up. I ruined all the, I did, I ruined all of what I did all day. And so I struggled with like that lifestyle for, I mean, I, I would still say I struggled with it to an extent, but I'll get there in a minute. But, um, that's where it really started. And then in high school, something that I really also struggled with was following influencers on Instagram, fitness influencers. And like, and it was like, I would, I would put them on like this pedestal of like, this is my goal, you know? And I was like, and I would look at them and I'd be like, oh, they're so beautiful. Like, oh, I was like in ninth grade. And they're like, you were saying earlier, there was this woman who she had like four babies and she was tiny. And I was like, I've never looked like that. And I'm 14. Like, well, I, you know, and I would like, and at that time I was just looking at them and just thinking, well, that's my goal. And so I enjoyed, look. I wasn't like, at that time I wasn't realizing it was such like a damaging thing to me. Um, and then even to the point where like I had boyfriends who were following these influencers and then I was like, well, I need to follow them too to yes. like compare myself because I'm like, that's what they are looking at. Like, I that's went through what, that too. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, and, and even at those times, like I was okay with it, you know, like I didn't make a deal out of it. I was like, well, if that's what he's looking at, like this is my goal. And so when I'm in the gym with him, like I'm working towards that, like I'm working towards looking like her. And, um, and so again, that whole like the whole binge eat problem that I had it was just carried on and all of this, like in front of people, I was like, I'm not going to eat that much. And then I would just overeat. And then, so then it was, I mean, that's just so unhealthy. And then adding on the exercise into that, like I was like barely eating during the day, overworking myself, overeating at night and then repeat. Like that was my daily life pretty much for so many years. And, um, and so I think that that was very damaging to me. And it was just a way of life though. Cause like I said, it started when I was like in sixth grade, I was, a, I was just a little kid. Like I shouldn't have been already having like those thoughts, but it started so young that it was just normal. Um, and then I guess it's really just been the past few years that I've really started to like find freedom from that. And I think it was letting people in on those problems and those struggles that really like with Reeves, my husband, I mean, I've literally had to tell him, I'm like, Hey, this is a problem I have. Like I will, I struggle with this. Like I will try to overeat. And so I need you to like hold me accountable with this. Yeah. Cause it is, I mean, that yeah. is a problem. Like, and so he's aware of that and he has the opposite problem. <laughs> like he's like the total opposite, but like letting him in has helped me to like, you know, I, and he, and to know like he loves me just the way I am. Um, but okay. I'm trying to think of no, that's like, so good. Yeah. I, I think bringing people in, especially your spouse, if you're married yeah. and to the boyfriend thing and the spouse thing, like one thing for Christian that I'm so thankful for is he does not follow like, he doesn't follow girls. He doesn't know. He doesn't follow mm -hmm. like influencers like in the past in high school where you see that and then you're yes. insecure because you're like comparing yourself to them because you're like, they're seeing them. Yes. And I feel like as a spouse, you should help guard your spouse's heart, whether you're guy or girl, both. Like yeah. you don't need to be following people that you don't know yeah. that you're like idolizing in whatever sense, like protect both of your hearts yes. by, you know, doing that because that makes me feel really loved by Christian that mm -hmm. I know he's not looking at other places. So like, he's not comparing me to all these other people and I don't even think he is. I can just be fully me. Yes. And that helps you be a lot more confident because that is really hard. Yeah. Which I'll say too, like, especially in high school, it's for me it wasn't even like fitness influencers it's like girls at school and stuff who yeah. like play sports and do cheer and do all this stuff like they are working out all day they're working out every single day whereas yeah. I didn't do that so I wasn't doing that as much so my you know body didn't look like theirs and I remember thinking like how do I look like this and like everybody looks like this like all of my friends look like this and why do I not you know and it was like oh well they're working out. well I need to start working out you yeah. know which no hate to working out working out is yeah. like great you know but at the time it was like I couldn't figure out why everyone else looked 
so perfect and I mm-hmm. didn't, you know? Yeah. And I think that it wasn't even like going out and finding it online. It was like right in front of me. All the girls around yeah. me were, yeah. you know, more fit. Yeah. And I think and that it made me think when you were talking just a minute ago, too, because I was just like you, too, where when I looked my healthiest in my life is when I was the most unhealthy, like mentally and spiritually. And um so from the outside, I looked like I was healthy, but I was not. And with the working out thing, it makes me think of the saying too much of a good thing can become a bad thing, yeah. you know, because working out is so good. And like, I still, I work out, I want to work out. I want to take care of my body. But when that becomes like more important to me than my relationship with Christ, then you're on a really slippery slope. That's yeah. going to lead you downward way faster than you want to get there, you yeah. know, because like, if that's your main priority is like like you were saying like if self is my main priority we're going to be let down every single time because we're humans and we're flawed and only Christ is perfect like only he can achieve that perfection that we're like seeking yeah. after and so when we find ourselves on that slippery slope of well this is a good thing i want this to be like this is this is helping my body like this is this is bettering me like it's true but there's a slippery, like, there's a balance of it, like, of knowing this is healthy, this is good for me, but, like, Christ has to be my pri- priority, and what he says about me has to be, like, what is at the forefront of my heart and my mind, and I think that's where I have found a lot of freedom is something you, we talked about, the, like, life being so fleeting, like, I have found so much freedom in that, and, like, I'm reading through Ecclesiastes right now, and that whole book is about just yeah. the fleeting, like, how life here on earth is so fleeting, and I think that that can, like, that can be a scary thing to some people, you know, of, like, how temporary here life on earth is, but to me, I'm just, like, thank goodness, like, there's so yes, much freedom in yes. that, I'm, like, I'm 23 years old right now, and, like, my body is what it is and it's not what it used to look like and it's not what it's going to look like in two years from now and like and that doesn't matter yeah. like in the grand scheme of things because I have a healthy body I yeah. get up and I walk every day I get up and I move and I smile and I laugh and like I have conversations with my friends and and like that's healthy like yeah. and I'm I'm the he- like healthiest mentally that I've ever been yeah because of that like it's not in what I look like and because it's not about what I look like, I am okay with what I look like, yeah. you know, like it's just crazy how so true. it just kind of, it's a balance of like the good and just finding freedom and knowing like it really, it's not the end of the world. Like yes. if I gained a few pounds or if I lost a few pounds, like there's so much more to life than that. Y'all, God's word is such a game changer. Whenever I'm in the word, I definitely notice a difference in just the way that I speak, the way that I feel, all of it. The word is a game changer for all of our lives because it's based in truth. And I'm so thankful to partner with Crew, an organization that has missionaries in nations all over the world helping people find Jesus. Unfortunately, many of these people don't have access to a Bible of their own in their own language. And this is where we can come in and help fam. For only $24 a month, you can provide three people with Bibles each and every month. When you sign up to provide three Bibles with a monthly gift of $24, as a thank you, Crew will provide meals to 12 hungry people through their humanitarian aid ministry. Plus, you'll also get a free copy of Christian and I's new book, How to Put Love First. If you haven't heard about it, it's a 90-day challenge about putting God first in your life. This book is truly for everyone. We have actually heard so many cool testimonies from already doing this challenge. I actually talked to someone yesterday. Um, He's probably in his 40s, and he was just like, Sadie, I'm on day 83 of this book. I love it so much. He said, Christian's entries are so hilarious, but so impactful, and yours are so sweet and so thoughtful, and he just loved the different perspectives of our voices, but he said, I've truly learned so much from both of you. And it's just so cool because all of us, we're just diving in the word together. If you're not a part of our tech subscription, we're actually sending out daily videos of encouragement along the challenge. So we really want to do this challenge with you. We're grateful for everyone who's taken it. But yeah, that's going to be a gift to you if you sign up to help crew out. Lots of you have already signed up. And I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who have done that. But crew missionaries are asking us to continue helping them to get God's word out into the world and for us to keep covering them in prayers as well. So simply text good G O O D to 71326 to help today. Just imagine how much this monthly give could truly change someone's life. So text good to 71326. That's good G O O D to 71326 to help now or visit give.crew.org O R G slash good. Message and data rates may apply, available to US addresses only. Yeah. And it's like that confidence mm-hmm. is like. It's so different. And I I think about, we were talking about like being able to relate to people and how like so many people, you know, deal with things differently. And I feel like 
a lot of people I know and like my friends and like y'all have even said this earlier it's like you know you look back at pictures and you're like why did I think that you know yes. and I have always oh. been kind of like I've always been a person who does not like to be like negative about myself ever like I just don't do that naturally and like I have friends who are and I'm like why are you saying that about yourself like I just I just don't do that as much and back when I was super fit I remember thinking all the time like it wasn't that I ever thought I looked bad in pictures it was when I looked at pictures I was like okay I look perfect like I'm Mm -hmm. not changing anything I have to stay right here you know and it's like I idealized that and then when I wasn't then I was like yeah. yeah. Wait, what happened? Like what happened? I messed it up. Like I, I went yeah. off the track. Like I was yeah. perfect. And like, I, I couldn't get off that. Like, this is perfect. Don't move. Don't yeah. do anything yeah. differently, you know, yeah. kind of a thing. And so it was like that all my confidence was in like staying exactly the same and not changing. And yeah. then like slowly my like heart started changing. My mind yeah. started changing as that changed then I was like letting my body kind of yeah. relax yeah. and be different. Yeah. And I think like, which this is like a, you know, personal thing, which I've talked about. I talked about one time on Instagram just because I felt like it needed to be said, but like I started taking birth control and it changed my body so much. Yeah. And like literally like made me feel sick all the time. I like was just like so sick and like crampy and all this stuff. And during that time was when I struggled the most with my body because my body was changing and it wasn't my own like choice. It was yeah. like, I literally feel horrible because yeah. of this, you know? Yeah. And I was the healthiest I'd ever been physically, but I started to like change because I literally didn't want to get out of bed every day because yeah. I was cramping so bad. So I feel like there's things in your life that like at the time it was so hard, but it really changed my heart. Cause I was like, okay, this isn't like, it's like, you can just chill, you know, like yeah. at this moment, like there's nothing that you can do is going yeah. to make me feel better, but to just like rest, you know? Yeah. So, and I think that's similar with postpartum of like, okay, there's nothing I can do right now. Like you have to sit in it. You have to just rest. And like I was telling Freddie that the other day, uh, I was like, she didn't want to take a nap. She's like, I don't want to take a nap during the day because I want to do stuff. I'm like, Freddie, you had a baby five days ago. You have to take a nap. You know, like I would think we just, we're so like, go, 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 go. And sometimes you just have to say, give yourself grace, give yourself a gift, like take a nap, rest. It's okay. And sometimes like it's your circumstances that just like make you do it. You know, like I don't think at that time I would have been able to just like walk away from being at the gym every day. Mm -hmm. But because I like literally felt like I could not make it there, you know, it was, I stopped, you know. And for so many of you listening, your circumstances, you might've gotten sick. You might've had an injury. You might've like, you might be going through something that like requires all your time and attention and there is no time to go to the gym and that's okay. Like it's seasonal things. I mean, since I had Haven, I have not gone to the gym one time because I'm (laughs) like, when am I going to do that? And I'm not waking up at five. I just can't do it right now. So like, you know, it's just seasonal, but I love what you kept saying about the word freedom, Lydia, because I think that's the thing. You can find balance, but even more than balance I feel like you can find freedom when it comes to your body image and your confidence level and your mind when you mentally think about who you are and what you do and I have to say like when, when we talk about all the different features that are going to change and age and life and who we were and who we're going to be I've like never feared getting older and I feel like even earlier you were talking about uh a TikTok and this girl was like 27 and uh her sister's like you're basically 30 she's like I'm not 30 it's like I'm not 30 I'm not 30 and I've never been afraid of turning 30 I'm like I I am excited for 30 because um and I've said this before but I remember two mamas said she thinks women are the most beautiful in their 30s and I've always been like well I cannot wait to see (laughs) what I look like at 30 um but I think it's too because mom and two mama and mama joe like I'm so grateful. I've seen a legacy of like beauty in, in women and just Memo Joe at 92. I think she's just beautiful. Like mm-hmm. truly, I think she's so beautiful. The way she styles herself and her hair, the way she styles her hair. I love her wrinkles. Like I played with her wrinkly hands at church all growing up. And I just love that. And then two mama, like so beautiful, so stunning. And my mom. And so I'm like, I look forward to the process of aging yeah. because one, it's going to happen. You can't stop it. You can't avoid it. So you might as well lean into it. But then I also am like, I love the things about my grandma and my great grandma and my mom that they might not love, but I do. And I appreciate. And so just trying to remember that 
you know, what people see about you and appreciate about you, that you, they might even appreciate the things that you don't love. Like this might be a little TMI, but this is clearly, if, if guys are still listening to this podcast, <laughs> then that's awesome. High five. But I'm about to share something that's kind of funny about my C-section scar. It's like not pretty, you know, it's, it's very red and it is there and it's kind of big. Honey loves it. Literally every time she sees it, she says, <laughs> it makes me tear up. She says, that's where Haven came out of. Aww. And I'm like, yes, that's where Haven came out of. And just like reminding me that like that part of my body is a reminder that that's where Haven came out of. Yeah. And she, honey, loves it. So it's the things that you might even be insecure about that people appreciate so much about you, you know? Okay, Grace. Okay, <laughs> the, so the finale. I will share. Um, I would say this is kind of maybe a little bit different than I don't know I'll just share and and take from it what you will but in high school I feel like we've kind of talked about this a little bit you always said that people would be like oh I just forgot to eat I just forgot to and that was never me I never forgot to eat I was I was hungry (laughs) and like how do you forget to eat I don't know that was not (laughs) me and so my kind of shift that started when I started to just think about stuff like that was when people would say stuff like that and I wouldn't be thinking that way. And then I'd be like, man, should I be thinking that way? Like, yeah. am I eating too much? Like they're them, my friends and just people around me talking about it in high school is what made me start to question be like, Oh, is there something wrong with me? Because I'm not thinking that way because I'm not. And so it almost started from just like influence of the people around me. Um, just being like, okay, like, well, I don't know. I don't ever forget to eat. Like, am I eating too much? I don't ever, you know, they're eating these small portions. I'm not, I, you know, all the things that that led my mind to in high school. So my, my struggle in high school was really more just with the people around me influencing me to be like, question, to, to think, to question my own self, even though I was skinny, I was healthy. Like I played sports. I was, I, I looked fine. When I look back at pictures, I'm like, I looked great. I look better than I look now by the world standards, you know, but they, the people I was surrounding myself with made me question like, Oh, like, well, maybe I am eating too much, maybe. And then that kind of started where I would, I wouldn't, I didn't stop eating. I'm going to be honest with you all. I didn't stop eating, but <laughs> every time I did, I would think about it and then I'd feel guilty and then I'd be like, well, maybe I shouldn't have been eating so much or whatever. So it started this spiral of like, a mental battle. for me, it was way more of a mental battle than like, ne- not necessarily the physical. I didn't stop the eating, but mentally I would like guilt trip myself afterwards. But like, oh, well, I shouldn't have eaten that. Like, because other people aren't or because I don't look this way or whatever. And so it was so mental for me in high school. And then same thing. I got on birth control, um, right after I got married. And then I gained a ton of weight from that, that I had never had. That was so hard because Mm -hmm. like you said, I, one, I had never looked that way before and I didn't want to be active because I didn't feel good mentally. It messed with me a lot. I was super anxious. Um, I struggled with depression when I was on birth control, just like totally messed with all of my hormones in a lot of different ways. So I didn't feel like myself. I didn't look like myself. And then because mentally I wasn't in a good spot, I wasn't able to rationalize what was happening to me either. I remember telling Brian a couple of times that just, I don't feel like myself. Like I just don't feel normal. Um, and in a lot of ways, my hormones were off and I probably, you know, that was probably a very valid thing to say. Um, and once I got off of birth control, a lot, a lot of that changed f- so much for the better. Um, but that was another little season of my life where I struggled. So for me, it was like these seasons. Um, and I'm now, right now, currently I'm in one again with being postpartum and I'm like five months postpartum right now. And we were talking about how I'm pretty much just now starting to feel like myself, um, Obviously, that's such like a, I don't know, such a vague picture of who you really are, the way you look, really. And that that is what I feel like I've learned most in this season is that I feel like there's so much more depth to my life now yes, because I have yes. something bigger to live for. Not obviously the Lord and my relationship with Him, but like once you have a child, your perspective in so many areas of your life just shifts and it gives you something else to live for. Not even, not even saying that I'm living for her, but like in the day to day, like she's my alarm clock. She's, I'm thinking about what she needs to eat, what she needs to wear for the day. And if she needs a diaper change and like, like I'm not focused on myself, I'm no longer looking inward because I don't have the time to, I'm not able to, um, I have a different priority. And so 
that has helped a ton to just shift my perspective off of what I look and also like all of my stretch marks and all of my loose skin and all the things that look different than they did before are a part of her story like that's part of what brought her here and so that brings me comfort just looking at it in a way of like that's it's not only part of who she is, but it's also part of who I am now. And it's part of what brought her here. Like those tell the story of her yeah, life and yeah. like all the growing that my body did physically to carry her, but also mentally and emotionally. Um, and like, I think I'm probably a better mom for having stretch marks and not looking perfect because one, I'm able to relate with other moms and probably share with them better and like comfort them better people, other people going through that season, but also just able to understand that it's not it's just not about us it's not the way we look it's not about the way we look and and I don't know it's so hard when you're in the thick of it I will say I still have days that I feel just like ugh, I don't feel like myself I don't look like myself like sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like I don't know I just don't feel like that looks like me you know and that's like exactly what you're talking about that mentality of like we get so used to what we look like especially like for me, I feel like I haven't changed a whole lot over the years. So I got so used to seeing myself in the mirror that then when that changes, you're like, whoa, that's different. Like, that's not me, but it is me, but it doesn't look like I used to look. And so just like that mental hurdle of like, this is still me and I'm, I'm okay with that. Like it's, you just have to get used to it almost. Like, I feel like it's just a gradual diving into like, this is me and like, I'm okay with that. And I'm, I'm more beautiful for the ways that my mind has changed and my body has grown and all of those things than I would have ever been before because that that me was way more shallow and cared way more about what she looked like and probably a lot less about the people around her and like how do you make that shift and I think a lot of it is just time like give yourself time and just sit with it like don't be afraid to like look at yourself in the mirror and be like no this is me and that's okay like and like look at yourself in the mirror and say these are the things that are beautiful about me and also the things that are beautiful about me that have nothing to do with my body like the fact that I love people well the fact that I'm a good friend and even I'll say too like being a nurse I think about so often like people who like physically maybe they're physically handicapped maybe they're bound to a wheelchair or a bed or they don't have legs and that gives me so much perspective and so much gratitude for my body for the things that it does for me like you said you're, you have gratitude for the things your body does for you. The fact that it brought life into the world and all of those things, because I can walk and I can run and I can play with my baby. And some people don't even have that, you know? And so just like having gratitude for where you are and where your body's taking you and all the, all the, I mean, you think about like every single hard day that your body's carried you through every single good day that your body's carried you through, like every single thing, good or bad up until this point in your life, your body has carried you through it. And so just having gratitude for that has, that's what changed my perspective is just having gratitude for every day, good or bad. It's great. My body got me to that point. You That's know? so great. I am glad you said that because it reminds me, I used to do that when I would go through seasons and I, and I still do that. If I'm ever struggling with insecurity, I literally start thanking each body part for what it does. And so like that may be a practical takeaway from this conversation. Like Bella said, like, don't be negative about yourself. Stop yeah. doing it. If you're talking bad about yourself, correct yourself. Yeah. If you say something negative about yourself today to someone else, say, I'm so sorry I said that. Yeah. That's not true. Or that was shallow. Or that's not what I need to say. Or if you say it to yourself, even be like, nope, actually, that's not true. Um, If you look at your legs and think, man, they need to be smaller, actually say, thank you, legs, that you are getting me where I need to go today. And you're walking and you're capable of running. Or if your arms, you're like, oh, man, they look weird or whatever. I wish they were shaped or more toned. Say, these arms pick up my kids or these arms cook me dinner. These arms hug the people that I love. If it's your wrinkles, man, I'm so glad I've smiled so much in my life that I got wrinkles. Thank you, God. Like just start thinking your body for what it's done and what it's capable of. And I think if you can um, even remind yourself and, and say the things about what makes you you that are so much more than your body, just be confident in that. It's going to help sustain who you are um, in the long run too. I, I was thinking about how we said you really can find freedom and just a practical example when you're talking about other girls talking about forgetting to eat and whatnot. And I used to worry about that too and what other people would order. And I'd make sure I order what everyone else, like you said, the portions and whatnot. 
But this is so funny. And this is something that I, I would have used to be really insecure about. But now I think it's I just think it's funny because it doesn't make me insecure. But am I um, with my in-laws? So my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and then Chance and Maya. And we all, when we go out to dinner, it's just hilarious because every time Maya and Cherie order the salad and that's what <laughs> they like. And I I used to would have gone, I'm going to get the salad because they're ordering the salad. Uh -huh. I'm not going to be the one. It never fails. We don't even talk about it. I accidentally ordered the same thing as Chandler every <laughs> single time, my father-in-law. And we always <laughs> laugh because Cherie and Maya are going to get the salad and me and Chandler are going to order something that sounds really amazing. <laughs> And like used to, I would have been like, oh man, why did I do that? Like, that's so embarrassing. I should change my order. But I'm like, I don't want the salad. That's I just, I just not what I want. You know, I'm going to get what I want. And they can get salad because that's what they actually like and what they want. And I actually come to realize they like the salad. Yeah. See, that would be just a cop out for me. I'd just yeah. be doing that to look good. I'm not getting the salad because I want it. Yeah. And so I'm like, I, I appreciate that you like that. I like this and that's okay. And that doesn't make me less healthy. Yeah. That doesn't make me, bit. you're not thinking about what I'm ordering. Yeah. You're not thinking that I'm whatever. Like I don't even go there. I'm like, man, I'm going to enjoy this meal. And so just, that's what I mean by you really can find freedom, even in those small little things. I was just going to say too, like, like don't be afraid to like correct your friends if they're like yes. Yes. being negative in your life. Yeah. And like, I have, you know, and even you don't have to be serious or it doesn't have to be like a big sit down conversation, yeah. but just be like, hey, like your negativity is like making me feel bad about myself. Yeah. And like for me, I've never been like a super negative person about myself, especially it's like when other people do, like Grace said, it makes you think about it. Like yeah. Grace said when like her friends would say like. What was it? Forget um, to eat. Oh yeah, I forget yeah. to eat. It's like then it makes you think that, but it's like I don't think that. It's like I, I, I never am think thinking about it. Like, it never it. leaves my mind. Like I don't typically just like you know put on an outfit and think like oh like I look so fat or anything yeah. like mm -hmm. that. But when I have friends around me who are saying that, it makes me think that. So yeah. I I'm just not afraid to like say to a friend like hey yeah. I don't need that negativity. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just, yeah. and it doesn't have to be serious. It's just like, I don't need the negativity. Yeah. You can even joke about it, like, hey, get that negativity out of my life. Yeah. Like, don't you be saying that in my presence. Here, like, girl. just yes. buddy. Yeah. It's just like cheer. being able to, you know, know where, what you need and yeah. express that, especially to your close friends. Like, yeah. your close friends should, you know, be able to understand and not get, like, you know, upset with you if you have yeah. to, like, be like, look, not good for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's not good for them. Yeah. It's a loving thing to do. I know, and it's like, it, yeah. even if you are not ready to have that conversation with your friend and be like, you know, you need to stop being negative about yourself, just say, your negativity is making me negative. Yeah. So, like, don't rub <laughs> that off on me. That. Yeah. Yeah. Get, out of that, get that cord out of my face. I was just thinking that. Get that get cord, cord out of my face. face. I was thinking that, too. Except for you can give That's me the cord. <laughs> <laughs> Or it's a healthy off. <laughs> <laughs> but get that negativity out of my face. <laughs> um, I was going to say, too, being willing to take a compliment. I feel like yes, that's something that's so many true. people struggle with. And I did for a long time, too. Like, people would compliment me, and I would just feel awkward because I'm like, oh, like, thank you, but I don't feel that way. Or I don't know. It just make me feel awkward. But, like, if someone compliments you, just say, wow, like, thank you. Like, and then take that to heart. Like people mean it. If they go out of their way to tell you, you look beautiful, or your hair looks good today. They like your outfit, whatever. Like they mean it for the most part. And also just like, I feel like realizing another thing that helped me was realizing for all the negative thoughts I've ever had about myself and my own body. I've never once thought about that. About no, my friends. Right. Yeah, never so once true. thought about that, about the people I loved or yeah. someone random person I saw on the beach in a bikini. Never yeah. once. Like, so we're our own worst critics and just so realizing true. that like people don't see that when they see you, but you see that and that's okay. That's a struggle. It's real. We've all been there, but nobody else is seeing that. So give yourself true. grace. And I think realizing too, like a lot of times it is like a mental battle, like yes. we talked about. And like for me, I say like I've never been someone to be super negative, but the truth is like maybe I would never say it you know yeah, but I may be negative it, yeah. in my mind yes. but I would never say that out loud yeah. kind of like you were like I didn't want to eat in front of people but yeah. I would do that in private it's right. like I would never like in front of people yeah. be like negative about myself but I may think it in my mind you know or yeah, have a mental have to, battle in your mind yes so. you have to correct your thoughts you're mm -hmm. just as much as you correct your words you have to say because whenever I when I was getting out of that eating thing that I was going through I would literally have to like 
in my mind while I'm eating, be like, I'm so thankful for what this food is doing for me. It's fueling me. Even if it was just like not even good for me, I would just, just like mentally be like, you know what? This is good. It's going to give me energy. It's going to sustain, like, and it's not, I'm not going to speak anything bad or even think anything bad while I'm eating this. And throughout the process of doing that, now I don't have to do that. It's just natural, right. you know? So you do have to correct your thoughts. And I don't too. want to anyone to think that I'm saying like I never think yeah, that because it's right. not that I don't think it it's right. just that I don't you don't say I'm it. just not yeah gonna yeah. say that yeah. yeah and I think that um something we talked about before we got started and I don't know if we have mentioned it while doing it but is it's also like our body image and how we view ourselves it changes through the seasons you know we've talked about and and I think that that's another thing that I had to learn too was to give myself grace yeah. to when I did slip back into a negative mindset yeah. or like, um, because, and I'm, I think it's like a comparison to like sin in the same yeah. sense of like, when you walk, when you start walking with Christ, if you expect to immediately be perfect, you're gonna, you're gonna fail. And then if you let that failure, like just let you slip back into it, then then you, you know, you messed up. Like you can't, you can't let that failure stop you from the progress you've already made. Like you have to keep walking and eventually like the sins you used to struggle yeah. with, they're not going to be the same anymore. But so true. I think it's like similar with body image in the sense of if you expect like today, if you're listening to this and you struggle with body image and you expect like, well, I listened to it and I'm about to stop. Like yeah. I'm never going to say ne another negative thought. Like I'm never going to, I'm never going to overeat again. I'm never going to undereat again. I'm never going to do this again. That's probably not the reality of no, what your life is going to look like. Like, yeah. like it's actually a process of life of growing and learning and messing up and getting back up and trying again the next day. And I think that was huge for me was like, I used to like, I would mess up and I'd hate myself and I'd be like, I ruined it. And so, and then the next day I would just do the whole cycle again. Yeah. And it had to come to a point where I was like, no, like each day is its own day and each thought is its own thought. And, and like we're saying, when those thoughts come in your mind, like correct yourself, but give yourself grace and knowing like that doesn't define you and you haven't ruined the progress you've already made. That is so true. It is so seasonal and it is a journey and you're going to have to have people in your life that help keep you accountable. Yeah. Yes. And also can just, you can trust and you can go to, and they're not going to shame you when you go back to the way that you used to think. And it's so awesome. Like we talked about sharing with your spouse, like Christian knows so much about what I struggle with. I know what he struggles with. Yeah. And especially when it comes to body image and um, working out and overeating, undereating, all the things we have to just be really honest with each other. And yeah. especially because Christian is literally a fitness person and yeah. that is what he does for his job and he yeah. is very fit and always on a new program and Christian will say things like oh I, I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna I'm gonna either bulk or I'm gonna cut or I'm yeah. gonna do this and sometimes I tell him I'm like okay I'm so <laughs> proud of you I love that you're doing that but don't talk like that because you look amazing right now yeah. when you say you need to do something different it makes me feel like I need to do something different yeah. even though you're not saying that like he's he is the most encouraging person of who I am and what I look like never had anyone speak more life and truth and never anything shameful but sometimes when you're comparing yourself to someone yes. else like we've said just like when they say oh well, I'm gonna you know I forgot to eat or I do this when they talk about it in their way. So it's so important. Like you don't compare your journey to someone else's, but that you do invite people into your journey so that they yes. can help you and you can help them. And I, I think Christian needs me to say too, you look awesome. Yeah. Like you're amazing. You know, yes. guys need it just as much as girls. And that's been something that I've been surprised by in marriage is guys struggle with this just as much. So yes. if you are a guy listening to this, I know you need it too, because Christian and I have these conversations all the time. And ultimately I think more than anything physically, like we said, it is mental and that can be the same struggle for no matter who you are, no matter what age you are. Yeah. But, you know, God talks so much in the Bible about how we really can take those thoughts captive. We really can transform our mind mm -hmm. um, to be in accordance with his will for your life. And so there is so much truth in the Bible on this topic. And we want to encourage you to dive into that, yeah. dive into there. But like I said, in this podcast, we really just wanted you to be able to maybe hear your story and our story and know that there is freedom to be found when it comes to body image, when it comes to um, 
eating disorders, binge eating, anorexia, whatever your struggle is, there's freedom even in the midst of postpartum, whether you're dealing with postpartum or birth control problems or you're sick or an injury, wherever it is, like no matter what season of life you are in, there is freedom to be found when it comes to body image mentally and physically. And I love what that girl with COVID said. Yes, God healed me physically and I'm so thankful for that. But she said, most importantly, he healed me spiritually. And so today, yes, start the journey of the physical healing, but I I actually pray that today you get spiritually healed and in your mind, it becomes more clear to you what truth is, who you are, so that you can live your life that God has for you. And this whole thing that we do, LO is live original, live confident in who you were originally created to be. And friend, that is possible no matter what your journeys look like. So we love you and more conversations to come. As always, comment, let us know what you want us to talk about next. This is just, these are just conversations we're naturally having at dinner, um, but we want to know what y'all want us to talk about. So love you guys. And I hope you go out there and start truly living this message out.